Among other titles, Stalin was known as the Great Helmsman. But perhaps even the Great Helmsman would have been surprised that one of the most significant moments in the advance of women into maritime careers should come during his iron rule. This is Captain Anna Ivanovna Shetanina of the Soviet Merchant Navy. Echoes of many a woman's march into sea trades can be found in her beginnings as a seafarer, not least because she wouldn't take no for an answer. She went to Vladivostok Nautical College when she was only 16 years old and said, I want to come here. The principal said, why don't you go home and bake pies? But she realised that there was nothing in the rules that said she couldn't go, so she did her course, she qualified as a master, she became the first certificated ocean-going master in the world, as far as we know. As soon as a seaman realised that he is not dealing with a helpless female, but with a determined, self-assured person who knows her job and has a loud voice, his respect and obedience will be guaranteed. As so often, any progress made by women seafarers was compromised. With every step forward, at least one step back. It would not be until well into recent years that women would in fact start to turn the seascape into she-scape. And attitudes were, and remain, a key challenge to overcome. When ladies become skippers, the bridge will be tastefully decorated. And so will the officers. The dog watch will be more interesting. The sirens will have to go out of business. No luck, it's a woman. That Cunard cartoon may seem quaintly funny, but for many, it will still have something to say about attitudes to women in maritime careers. A lot of it is the culture on board. If you want this to happen, it can happen. I think senior management really have to make that, that call. And it's up to shipping companies. You know, companies like Maersk are making it happen. There's no reason why other companies can't. Currently, the actual facts at sea remain unencouraging. Under 2% of the million plus seafarers working at sea are women. With engineering often key to a seafaring career, the tiny proportion of women completing apprenticeships in the field, below 9%, is echoed in shipping. And there's a lack of role models at the top, with early leakage of women out of technical careers. But projects like the Royal Navy's giant new aircraft carriers are a powerful draw. Just the kind of challenge that makes a maritime career worthwhile for young women like graduate naval architect Emily Lennox. Still, as Emily found out when discussing her plans, there's something of an information gap to be bridged. My family were really excited that I was sort of going into an engineering career, but my friends were a bit surprised when I said to them that I was doing naval architecture. In fact, quite a few of them had to actually explain to them what naval arch architecture was. Um, and it's not the first time that I've been said to someone, so what is naval architecture? And they actually thought that it was like naval, naval piercing, as in like belly button piercing. <laughs> One of the key issues in the promotion of maritime career opportunities is, well, promotion. What you might call the encouragement value of role models at the top. Though the Sheescape is widening, that's still a problem. Fran Collins is Executive Director of Operations for Condor Ferries and a former captain in the company. For women at sea, it's like anybody at sea. Being at sea, is a, you have to be very independent, you have to be very resourceful and you have to be very assured. It's a, a self-confidence that you know that you can cope with what might throw at you because when we're on a ship, deep sea particularly, we don't have the fire brigade, we don't have the opportunity to get off the ship and go home from work because you work with your colleagues, you live with your colleagues. So for people, women, anybody to see, to see, you have to be that very kind of self-possessed, capable person. You have to not be daunted when things come up that you don't expect. Fran and Emily have serious support. Speaking at the Day of the Seafarer in the Philippines, IMO Secretary General Kitak Lim told delegates that the importance of women to seafaring's future could not be overstressed. He issued this clarion call. 
the shipping world cannot afford to ignore such a rich and largely untapped source of quality recruit. For all the progress that's been made, research shows that the picture for women seafarers across the world's oceans is a clouded one. Data collected by the International Seafarers Welfare and Assistance Network shows that many still report discrimination and sexual harassment, and that has consequences. One of our other significant findings was that there are a number of women seafarers reporting high levels of of stress, depression and anxiety while on board. That was true of women working on um, cargo ships, on tankers and cruise ships. And if you're a woman alone on any ship, but most likely a cargo ship, tanker, then those issues are likely to be exacerbated. But if there were more women working at sea, some of those issues, I think, go away. One service where that issue is being addressed full ahead is the Royal Navy and RN responsibility starts early. Level. Level. Emergency stations, emergency stations, loud bang heard, all compartments carry out phase one damage control check. Here's Lieutenant Emma Yearling, leading an exercise in a nuclear submarine simulator. She's a tactical weapons engineer in a Trident SSBN, delivering CASD, the continuous at sea deterrent. Maintaining all of the equipment, being able to, to carry out our job day to day um, and ensure that, that at all times we do have that CASD. It's quite a big responsibility, but um, the, the team and, and everyone on board work hard to be able to deliver that. As long ago as 1998, nearly a third of the crew of one RN warship were women. And now, the youngest commanding officer in the Royal Navy is Lieutenant Annabel Broad here taking HMS Exploit to sea. Her plans for the future would definitely win an approving nod from Captain Chetanina. I'd like to become first sea lords. Yeah, I, I, I will go as high as I wish to go if that is what I enjoy. So I will stay in the Royal Navy as long as I enjoy it and it, it, you know, it gives back what I give into it. And hopefully show other females that you can do it. There's, there is no glass roof, there is no you can't do this because you're a woman. We can do it and we here are doing it on a daily basis. They say that the sea is in the blood of every Briton. That's every Briton. Which is why, from the shores of the UK to the furthest oceans, we can expect the seascape to become more and more a she-scape.